Hey there friends, what's up? Kevin here from the MSOTD Rocks YouTube channel and today we're going to take a look and preview the year that is 2021. Before we get started though, please follow MSOTD Rocks on places like Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You will get all these Song of the Day features on those platforms. It's a new song every single day from one of the bigger bands in rock and metal and all their subgenres, or from the emerging upcoming bands list so you get to expand your music horizons. We also will post anytime a YouTube video, a podcast episode, anything, any kind of announcement on those platforms. We ask you a bunch of questions, you can connect with us on there. And on Instagram, we also have our IGTV series, which comes out every single Tuesday night. It's behind the scenes look at what's going on here, or sometimes some special things happen. And every single Wednesday night at 9 p.m. Central, you can join our IG live streams. Yes, it is a live stream. You come hang out with us for like an hour, and we just answer your questions. You just whatever happens, happens. Please join us on all those platforms. Please also subscribe to this YouTube channel because not only are you going to get this, you can go back and take a look at our 2020 year-end awards. We did seven different videos on those. You can also look at all our album reviews. More to come out this year in 2021. You can look at the Kevin Figures Out series where I try to figure out if I like certain bands or not in the scene. I'm not that well versed in. And you can also take a look at our top 10 lists, our videos about emerging and scene today, all that kind of stuff. And this YouTube channel is also where the Chord Progression Podcast lives. It is our very own podcast. We're interviewing all the emerging upcoming bands in the scene today. And 2021 promises to be even bigger. So I'm looking forward to seeing it. We've had bands like King Collapse, Saul, Through the Fight, Kill the Lights, GFM, Wild Ways, all on the podcast with many great ones to come, especially in January. I got some surprises for you guys. So you can watch those episodes right here, or you can listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and iHeartRadio. Link subscription below for everything. So like, share, subscribe, tell your friends, join us, and without further ado, let's go. So before I jump into it, normally I make a video looking back at my 2020 prediction, seeing if any of them came to be true, but I'm not going to do that this year because, well, yeah, 2020 was completely different where COVID-19 completely upended the music industry to the point where concerts had been stopped as of March of 2020 for the majority. A lot of your major concerts had been canceled or postponed to later dates in 2020 and then ended up getting pushed back till 2021. A lot of the independent music venues were shut down. Some failed and completely went under and some are still struggling. And that is just absolutely crazy. So there's a lot of things that happened that completely upended music history at this point. Plus going back to those live venues, yes, recently the American government passed a stimulus bill for $900 billion, which approved a $15 billion addition for the Sta Save Our Stages Act, which will allocate $15 billion to independent music venues, independent movie theaters, and cultural centers in order to make sure that they are still up and running once the pandemic is over. And if you guys want to take a look at my take on that, I did a whole rant on our IGTV channel. It is episode number 118, and I just go off on the fact that, yeah, it's great that we finally got the Save Our Sages thing in there, but it took way too long to the point where this should have been done in May or June. This should not have been done all till December, and it's all a bunch of bipartisan bickering and just one side not wanting the other side to look good. So the American government really failed on this one, and I'm not afraid to say it. So... Let's take a look at what we can expect in 2021 and what we're going to expect to see. Let's make some predictions, shall we? So the first thing that comes to mind is how is COVID-19 still going to affect 2021 as we enter into the year and with the vaccines from Pfizer and Moderna and other companies starting to be rolled out not only here in the U.S. but over in other parts of the world as well, specifically when it comes to Rockmill, we're going to look at Europe as well. What does this mean? Well... For the beginning, it's going to be interesting to see, again, how many of these bands still survive and still thrive during this time. We have seen a lot of bands do a lot of different things, which live streaming, different content things like there's just fun stuff, live streaming video games, um, concert series, whatever it might be. And I think we're still going to see a good amount of that the first half of 2021. And it's going to be interesting to see how these bands continue to shape up and do this stuff because, yes, bands are still trying to make sure they maintain relevancy in 2021 following the pandemic until they can get back and play live once again. The interesting thing is going to be taking a look at how this is going to be done. And I think, again, Twitch is going to continue to be a major platform for this, along with podcasts as well, because podcasts are a way for these musicians to be interviewed, to get and to the public eye and to talk about their music. It's a great way for them to really expose what's going on with their music and get people more into it as well. So yay for me on that end. But when I really take a look at it, I think that for the for most part of it, 
COVID-19, what we've seen in 2020, especially in the second half of 2020, I think that's going to very much continue for the first half of 2021 when it comes to what you're going to get from different musicians and what they're going to be exposed to in terms of on social media, what they're going to expose you to in terms of Twitch streaming, all that kind of stuff. So I think we're going to see a lot of that. I think we're going to see some new wacky kind of things, like some weird like contest style things, like I was talking about with one with the band Young Other where they can do a whole entire like don't drink and drive Mario Kart game but like every time someone loses they have to do some sort of weird wacky punishment kind of make like a game show out of it in a way I mean that'd be kind of fun wouldn't you guys want to watch that so I think we're going to see a lot of that at first and it's all going to depend upon the real question when are concerts going to come back so one of the other major questions going into 2021 is when the hell is live music going to come back and I've got a couple of interesting takes on this one thing I've seen is Live Nation has been talking about live music coming back sometime in May or June of 2021, which is absolutely fantastic. So I would say expect the first half of the year to still be pretty dull, but in the second half of the year to be full of concerts, especially this is all going to depend upon the success of this vaccine rollout. And it's going to all depend on that, honestly. And not only here in the U.S., but also over in Europe as well, because those are the two major spots for rock and metal to really be in live settings honestly and also we'll put australia in there as well because australia's got a great metalcore scene right now i think look at fans like polaris make them suffer i'll throw ambient affliction in there i'm not that big on amity but i believe they still make their case now also i have seen some other bands do certain things in terms of tours for me the horizon has announced they're playing a tour in may for europe as well with the post human survival horror ep and that brings up a lot of confidence in us as well due to the fact that hey they might have a chance to come back, so we have a date. We have a couple of dates set. Plus, a lot of the music festivals that were going on in 2020 have kept a lot of their original lineups for that year and just pushed them to 2021, and they still seem to be a complete go. So that is a very positive. Thing. A lot of those tours that were either postponed or Kansas seem to be like revving back up once again in 2021. So it looks like it was kind of like a whole year, year of a three month off thing, but still not the best situation that we were put in. And then when concerts come back, what am I expecting? Well, I'm expecting something absolutely insane. So in the second half of the year, specifically take a look after the summer, when hopefully live music is back in full force, I think that we're gonna see something absolutely insane where all these different bands are gonna come out and they're gonna wanna play live. They're gonna do as much as they possibly can because of how much they lost in the past year and a half from that point, from March 2020 till let's say September 2021. They're going to get out there, they're going to want to play live, they're going to want to perform their new music for you. And every single band's going to be wanting to do this, whether they're the big boys like, you know, thrash metal people like Metallica, Megadeth, Anthrax, you're going to see people like Five Finger Death Punch, um, and even some smaller bands as well that are upcoming and really starting to make a name, so like Ice Nine Kills, I mean, most of why has made a name for those. And also a lot of the upcoming bands as well that are really starting to get a foothold for themselves in a smaller sense, like GFM, King Collapse, Still the Fight, Kill Lights, all those kind of bands. So what I'm expecting to see is I'm expecting to see a lot of different shows to be coming up, which is fantastic. Here's the issue, though. I'm going to see a high demand for bands to be playing these shows. But with the pandemic, with a lot of these independent places having to be shut down due to the fact that they just couldn't be financially sustainable during the pandemic, and with a good amount of places probably still going to unfortunately be shut down because of this fact, the supply of stages is going to be down while the demand is up in economic terms. That means we're going to have an absolute shortage of stages to the point where it's going to be potentially hard for a lot of these smaller upcoming bands to get proper stage time because even some of these smaller venues might have some pretty big acts playing them just because they have the stage. I don't know exactly what's going to happen, but what I see in the future is once live music comes back that we're going to be seeing a lot of competition in terms of trying to get stage time. I'm talking about bands competing against each other you know, who's better, who's not better. I'm talking about bands competing for time on that stage. And it's going to be interesting to see how it plays out. I still hope for the fact that we get a lot of music videos to still hold on so that we have that proper supply of stages and people can still see every single band, small, big, newer, older, whatever it might be. I, I just hope that it's not that way, but just the way that things have been going, I see there's going to be a potential tough time for independent and emerging bands to come up once live music returns i'm not i'm not happy about it but uh i think it might happen one of the big things that's going to happen in 2021 in my opinion is we're going to get a lot of new music now we've taken a look at what's going on during the pandemic and it seems like there's a lot of bands especially during this old time off they've been able to write a lot of music people to get together that's one thing we've been able to do consistently through across the board so we're going to get a lot of great music and certain bands have already announced the fact that they are coming out with albums with 
dates. Take a look at bands like the Foo Fires with their album Medicine at Midnight, which has come out on February 5th. Serge Tankian is coming out with an EP in February 2021 with music that he wrote for System of a Down. A Day to Remember finally going to come out with your welcome on March 5th. Oh, we'll see how this one goes because the long delay of about a year and a half, ooh, that never spells good for that. But we'll see what happens. The Pretty Reckless coming out with Death by Rock and Roll on February 12th. Evanes coming out with The Bitter Truth around March 26th. Architects coming out with For Those Who Wish to Exist, or For Those That Wish to Exist, my bad, on February 26th. So there are bands that are coming out with albums, especially earlier in the year that we already know dates for. There are other bands that have spoken about coming out with albums in 2021 that have already said they were planning on it, so it all depends on dates. Bands like Nothing More, The Killers, Papa Roach, Chevelle, Mastodon, Avenge Sevenfold, Beartooth, and Rise Against. Oh, thank God. But we've also have seen some bands working on some other stuff, so we can expect certain things to come out in 2021. Like Ice Nine Kills, hopefully. Motionless and White, maybe. A bunch of different, uh, smaller bands. I mean, any band could fall in it. But there's one I'm kind of particularly interested in see what happens with. And that's Falling in Reverse. So why am I going to be interested in watching what Ronnie Radke does in 2021? Well, in 2018 and 2019, especially early in 2019, Fun Reverse released three songs, which are the trilogy, Losing My Mind, Losing My Life, and Drugs. And in my opinion, Losing My Mind, I wasn't a big fan of that one. Losing My Life, that's what really started getting me into more Falling in Reverse when I started the project. And Drugs, I absolutely love it, and a lot of people really did enjoy it, especially with the feature of Corey Taylor on there. So then all of a sudden, at the end of 2019, the release of Popular Monster, oh my god. I'm not, I'm not going to mention with you guys, this is one of the best songs I've ever heard. I still probably listen to it every single day in 2020, and yeah, I'm still listening pretty much every single day. It is one of my favorite songs of all time, trust me on this, I still think it's fantastic. And then going into 2020, you saw what Ronnie Radke did as well, releasing The Drug and Me Is Reimagined, right as The Drug and Me Is You went gold. Did a whole entire tour around that. I got to go to the show in Madison, Wisconsin before the pandemic hit. Oh, thank God. And then all of a sudden, look at what happened in 2020, releasing Carry On, which was a song that was going to be potentially released on Coming Home, but never was. And just the growth that Falling in Reverse saw from 2019 to 2020, with Ronnie Radke becoming this massive Twitch streamer and just doing a bunch of different things on there as well. And take a look at their Spotify numbers. I mean, this was the real growth hits. You look at their Spotify wrapped in 2019, they had about 119 million streams or million minutes of streams or something like that. But you take a look at 2020, it was up to 256 million. I mean, that's an absolute monstrous growth rate. So over the past three years, Thunderverse and Ryan Yankee have released, what, four new songs, one unreleased track and one reimagined track, and they have taken off completely, and especially with Ronnie's Twitch channel. Yeah, I'm interested in seeing what this guy does in 2021, but what might it be? So what can we expect from Ronnie Radke and Falling Reverse in 2021? Well, I've got a couple of ideas, and one thing I keep seeing Ronnie Radke talk about is how we're going to be absolutely blown away by his next single. Now, this is definitely picking up a lot of hype for it, and when that next single from Falling Reverse drops, I think it's definitely going to have a bigger launch than Popular Monster did, because again, you had the success of the trilogy, you've had the success of Popular Monster, which, I mean, ended up getting retired from the charts from, and like, it was absolutely insane because that song was incredible. And it went gold as well, I'm not gonna even lie on that, it was, it's, it deserves to be that. But when it comes to this next one, will the initial launch of it be bigger than what Popular Monster was? Absolutely, because all eyes are on it now, all ears are on it now, everyone's connected with Falling in Reverse in a different way, ever more. So it's gonna definitely happen. Now, will it have as big of an impact, and will it have as big of a hit with the fans as Popular Monster was? Again, I don't know, only time will tell. I still think Popular Monster was one of the best songs of all time, but with the trajectory that Ryan Radke has been on from Losing My Mind, Losing My Life, Drugs, to Popular Monster, each song kept getting better and better to the point where I mean, I was absolutely blown away. So this could easily be something that he comes out with that just blows us all away, which I can't wait for. But what happens with live shows return in 2021? What's gonna happen with Falling in Reverse? And I gotta take a look at two things. One, what kind of live shows are gonna be playing? And two, what's gonna happen to Ronnie's Twitch channel? And this is what I think is gonna happen. When it comes to live shows, I think Falling in Reverse is gonna end up playing a lot bigger venues. Now, when I saw them on the Drug and Me is Gold tour with Escape the Fate and The Word Alive, they were playing some of those independent venues and music halls that were more of a, I would say, smaller scale to mid sized scale. Even. Thinking about one to 3,000 fans each night. So, that is pretty good for them being on a headlining tour. Before the pandemic hit, they were going to be in support of Asking Alexandria on a tour, which is absolutely incredible. However, 
I don't think that when the when this returns that they're going to be doing something like that. Due to the fact that the amount of growth that Fawnerverse has received, I think that they're going to be playing those bigger venues, those middle to big size venues. So they could be playing something like the Rave here in Milwaukee that holds between three and 4,000, especially if you're the bar, up to something like the Armory in Minneapolis, which holds up to 8,400 people, and they could pack the house with that. So it kind of, uh, if you take a think of a, a band that kind of has that kind of reach, think a day to remember. Now, I think they could easily happen them because they have the growth, they have the zeitgeist from Ronnie Racky, they have that mentality in pop culture, it's connected there. But the key I'm looking at this is what's going to happen to Ronnie's Twitch channel, especially when they go back out on the road because he's not able to do things that he did at home. That's something what I'm really interested in because this guy is smarter than we think. I mean, this guy's made so many right moves in the past that... I'm taking a look at this now, I'm like, whatever he does in Twitch in 2021 when live shows come back on the road, I think it's going to end up becoming the precedent for a lot of bands going forward in 2022, 2023. It all is going to depend upon what he does. Do I know what it's going to be? No. Am I sure he's thought about it already? Yup. So Ronnie Radke, can't wait to watch you do in 2021. Looking forward to it. One thing I want to look at is the Core Progression Podcast. Now, in 2020 when it started... I was still doing one episode a week and it was just me spouting off about myself, just kind of ranting. All of a sudden, pandemic started and I started doing more video interviews. And it got to a point where by August or September of 2020, I was doing two interviews a week with a lot bigger bands than I had been in the beginning. And by the time the end of the year came, I mean, I took a look at the bands that we did stuff with, like Team Collapse, GFM, Wild Ways, all the bands from MVK, Saul, Kill the Lights, Throw the Fight, Awake at Last, Blacktop, Mojo. I mean, the, the list of bands just kept growing and growing and growing. And what do I expect for 2021? Well, until live shows come back, the two episodes a week thing seems to be very strong and very good. Plus, with different connections that we've made with other PR firms, I mean, it looks like we're going to have some even bigger and better guests on here. And not going to say who, but um, I'm really excited for some of these. Also, I'm expecting a lot of growth in the podcast as well because I'm linking up with a couple of different promotional tools as well, and we're going to try and just get out to more people. So we're going to work that, and we're going to see the podcast grow from there. Now, when live shows come back, what's that going to look like? Well, I'm hoping to still do two episodes a week with different bands because, again, I'm doing them all on Zoom, so they're able to do them from the road as well. But I think the biggest key is, will I do that van idea? And Rockfest 2020, as long as you're still happening, renting a Winnebago, I'm putting my flag on the side, and it's going to be me, the Corp Progression Podcast, and Miss OTD Rocks, going rogue. Oh yeah, I can't wait for that. Before I send you on your way into 2021, there's one other thing I'm going to want to take a look at beforehand, and that is... After MGK released Tickets to My Downfall in September of 2020, we saw different hip-hop and pop artists start really taking a liking and venturing into rock and metal. Take a look at Halsey, for example, where, again, every time I saw Halsey on a track before Tickets to My Downfall from a rock and metal band, I'm like, oh, God, this is not going to go well. And it pretty much stuck that way because there's so many pop influences that it just didn't work out. However, Halsey being on the song Forget Me Too, it was absolutely fantastic. It sounded like she was perfect in that pop-punk realm. Sounded like she could have easily fit into a pop punk female vocalist in like 2006, 2007. And it said that she would be interested in doing a pop punk album of her own because of this. Now that is fantastic because again, more eyes are on rock and metal. Youngblood being featured on Bringing the Horizons Obey and working out incredibly well, keeping a rougher style, keeping up with the Bringing the Horizon pacing and hardness, but instead of going with the full on instrumentation that Ali Sykes went with on his verse, going more electronic style on Youngblood's verse, my god. That worked out incredibly well, so Youngblood's going to be in the zeitgeist of rock and metal. And Miley Cyrus, yes, she did talk about doing rock and metal and potentially doing covers of Metallica, did a cover of Zombie for Sage or, or Save Our Sages Fest, and again, you have your opinions as you do, but my, here's my question. Is this good for rock and metal that these pop artists are really taking interest in it? And the answer is gonna be coming at you in two weeks when I do a whole entire video about this so we're gonna really dive deeper into this I didn't want to take this whole entire video up and do it so yeah two weeks we'll see about that one so that's gonna be it for me today guys I hope everyone has a fantastic 2021 let's make it better than 2020 let's get live music back 
Let's get these independent music venues up and running again. And hell, let's get rock and metal back into the forefront, baby. This is Kevin from the MSOTD Rocks YouTube channel. We're going to end it with a hat flip. Okay, this kind of worked, but see ya!